Hey you guys, today is unit 6 and 2 tenths uh, called estimating the product of a decimal and a whole number. I know how much you guys love estimation because I love it too. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can go about uh, doing this. Um, so choose a way that's going to work best for you. But I also want to show you that again here is the standard that you are going to be graded on today. So do keep that standard in mind as you are working on your math. Let's get started. All right, guys, so option number one to help you with estimating and around is rounding to the greatest place. This is kind of like traditional rounding. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to locate the number the farthest left hand side. So in my number eight and two hundredths, my number to the farthest left is eight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look to the right, and if that number is five or greater, I'm going to change this number, I'm gonna round up. But it's not, this number is less than five, so I'm gonna keep it the same. It's gonna remain at eight, and then all the other numbers become zeros. Now I move over to my 312. I do the same exact thing. I look to the farthest left, that's a three, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to my right. Is that number 5 or greater? If it was, I would change that number. I would round up. i change it to a 4. But it's not. It's less than 5. So I'm going to leave it the same as a 3. Turn these others into 0. So now that I have it rounded, let's go ahead and figure out what my answer is. I have 8... 8 times 300. Well, I know 8 times 3 is 24. Oops, I keep doing that. It's 24. And I have two zeros I have to attach to it. So my answer is going to be 2400. But I bet a lot of people are starting to think because of yesterday, well, wait, Mr. Saracini, what about the decimal point here? Don't you have to move it over a spot? I don't. And the reason why is because this is actually a whole number. It's Think of it like money. This is $8. Is there any change here? There isn't. So it becomes irrelevant at that point. That's why my answer is just 2400 The next way we're going to go over is using compatible numbers. This is a way that you guys are most used to doing as a class. Using compatible numbers means rounding until you have two numbers that are easy to multiply together mentally. That's all it means. So I'm going to look at this number I have. I have 4 and 5 tenths times, or I'm sorry, 4 and 5 hundredths times 11. So I'm going to round using numbers that are easy to multiply mentally. So I have 4 and 5 hundredths times 11. Hmm. Well, I think it might be for this problem I have two options. I know rounding to my fives is usually easy because it's easy to count by fives, fives, tens, 15, 20. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to, for this one, I'm going to round up. Why not? I'm closer to the four, right? But it's easier mentally to round up to go by fives. So I'm going to change this to a five. And then I have my 11. Well, I know it's easy to multiply by tens, so I'm going to round that down to a 10. And now what I have here is I have 10 times 5. Remember, there are no numbers here. These are just zeros. So these really are irrelevant. They don't mean anything. So I'm going to ignore that they are even there. I'm just going to multiply 10 times 5, and 10 times 5 is 50. So that's all there is to it, you guys. All you're doing when you are using compatible numbers is you are looking at your problem, and you're rounding it either up or down to numbers that are easy to multiply mentally. If you go to multiply them mentally and you can't do it, then you rounded wrong. Rethink your strategy. 
Okay, now that you have seen the two different options for estimating the product of a decimal and a whole number, you are going to choose whichever option you feel is going to work best for you. Then you're going to go into Schoology, you're going to go into the math course, you're going to open up the folder Unit 6, Multiplying Decimals, and then you're going to go to Assignment 6.2, or 6 and 2 tenths, estimating the product of a decimal and a whole number. You're going to go to number 2 to practice estimating the product of a decimal and whole number. You're going to work on that activity sheet, open it up in Notability, and put all of your work in there. When done, you're going to go ahead and you're going to drop it right back to the box. That's called Estimating the Product of a Decimal and a Whole Number. Submit your work here. After you've completed that activity, please go on to IX, IXL Skill G1. Good luck, and I look forward to seeing your work.